Okay, people have asked me about um, mixing glazes, and it's just a hard thing to describe because <laughs> because you're wearing a mask over your face, so I don't know how I'll do it and talk. But um, here's my mask that I wear. I really like this mask. I got it at my clay supply place. I keep it in plastic, so it's pretty protected, um, although it looks pretty dirty. And there's just a nice thing about this one. I don't know what to say, but uh, I think these cartridges just pop out and you get replacement cartridges and they're small and they're not that expensive. And I don't know, or maybe you even just kind of unscrew the thing and replace. Anyway, I haven't done it yet, but anyway, I love this mask for how it fits because it's just really comfortable. You know, some of these masks can be like suffocating. So basically, I'm gonna put it on. Right now my fan in my studio is broken, so normally I would have the fan running, but um, luckily for us, for video's sake, the uh, fan doesn't work, so you can hear me. Although I don't know how much I'll be able to say, but I'll show you, here's where I keep all my glaze chemicals. They're in these bins that fit nicely in my shelves. And that's like all the big stuff, like Whiting and Gersley Borate and the Fritz that I use, Custer Feldspar, Silica, Nephilim Cyanite, that kind of stuff. And then up there I have more of like, you know, things like copper carbonate and tin and lithium and things that I can't afford to buy in bigger quantities. And then in here I have um, like the oxides like um, cobalt and rutile and those things that I use. So... I feel like I'm like a on Star Wars or something like that. So here's my triple beam scale, and that's what I use for everything. Uh, you probably, if I don't know if you know how to use a triple beam scale, but I have these weights. They're a thousand uh, grams and uh, five hundred grams, and they help uh, to do bigger amounts. And what you do is you put all of the um, all of the, what are they called, things, little slider things to zero. And then you want it to, uh, this should, when it's at zero, let's make sure there's nothing in there. No, there's nothing in there. That means that it should be balanced, which it's not. So then I use this, there's a little twisty guy back there. And I try to get it to balance. This is really important to do before you measure your glazes out because you want to start off where zero actually is zero. Okay, that looks pretty good. I like to mix mostly 10,000 gram batches, which fit in a five gallon bucket, these guys. And then I also have some that I maybe use a little bit less or just haven't made the transition and haven't done the calculations yet. And they go in these, whoops, 8,000, I make 8,000 grams in these kind of square buckets. So, what am I going to do? I keep all my glaze recipes in a little index card box. And right now I'm going to mix up one that I call teal. Now, the reason that I don't give out my recipes is that it took me a really long time to come up with most of them. So, I just feel like I just can't give them away. Not yet. Maybe when I'm old. Like 200. But, um... I am willing, for the record, if somebody has a really nice, I, I fire at Cone 6 Electric, if somebody has a really nice orange, like a nice orange, like a rich orange, not rust, orange, or a yellow. And I don't, I'd really rather not use, um, like, what are they called, mason stains? I have no interest, but... If that's the only way to do it, I might break down, but I'd much rather use oxides. I mean, they had to use something to get that mason stain in the first place. Does anybody know anything about that, how they make mason stains? I'd like to know about that. So anyway, so here's, okay, so if you're mixing your own glazes, I think that the smart people find one glaze and then they, uh, like just do a lot of variations of that one glaze. So then you can just buy the main chemicals that are materials that you need. I hate calling it chemicals. I don't like it. So I call it materials. Um, 
get the main ones that you need, like you, if you ha your glaze has like custard, feldspar, and silica, and nephsi, and whatever, and you have your like basics, then you don't have to carry like tons and tons of different <laughs> materials. But I, that's not how I did it. I liked to like kind of like intuitively pick and choose glazes and um, play around with them. So mine are all over the map. And I'm going to just start off by measuring out a couple things and have you watch me. And oh, here's one thing is that it's really good to start with water in your bucket. So instead of adding water to the materials, you add the materials to the water. Now, I don't really, I haven't found anything about like add the nephsi first or add the nephsi last for hard panning. I used to have some glazes that hard pan for a while. Now they don't anymore. So I'm not the person to ask about that. So let's see. I'm going to get my mask on and then I'm going to do a little mixing. Let's see how this goes because this is often a little chaotic anyway. So I might just have to abandon ship here. But let's see. These are really adjustable, you know, with these drops. You really want it to fit nice and tight. You want it to fit nice and tight around your whole mouth so you look all funny when you take it off. <laughs> That's why. So you can look really funny when you take it off. Okay. So for this mystery glaze, we're going to start off with talc. I'm mixing. Huh? Oh boy. Okay. 1,170 grams of talc. So how I'm going to do it. I know that 1,170 grams of talc will fit in my thing. I, but I don't know if I have 1,170 grams of talc. No, definitely not. Let's see. Backstock? Anywhere? Wait. Yes, I do. <laughs> it's chaotic here. So, okay, so we can do it. 1,170. Here's 1,000. Here's 100. And here's 70. Okay, 1,170. Now, talc. Let's get it going on here. Okay, my favorite tool for glazing with big, big uh, volumes is this metal scooper. I know that each, for average uh, weight chemical material, each scoop is like maybe 250 or 300 grams. So three of these should be good for this, right? 1,170, maybe a little bit more than three. Whoop. Now wait, I should put you so you can see this. Hold on. Not bad. Okay, now again, maybe four. Here comes two. It's a little bit of a, whoop. Trying to make as little dust as possible. Here comes three. Talk is a little bit on the light side, so might be four. There we go. Three and a half. So then I want the triple beam to measure right into the middle. I'm tapping this lightly on the shelf above. It's kind of a nice little helper. That's it. 1,170. Now, now before, before I do anything, I'm going to double check everything. 
because it sucks when you make a mistake with glaze mixing. It really sucks. Suddenly you're doing tons of algebra, <laughs> and which I like algebra, but anyway, it's nice to just mix it right the first time. So I'm gonna double check first on my card. 10,000 grams, 1,170. That's what I want. I'm gonna double check the weight. 1,170. Everything's right. I'm gonna put my mask back on. And I'm gonna pour this into the water. And then I'm gonna, what I do is I cover it kind of quickly with my lid. So I'm just gonna really gently kind of let it slide in there. A big dust cloud's gonna form that I don't want, that I don't like. Try to get it all in there and then cover it up. Now, a really nice trick. I always keep a brush around and with th this kind of amount, it doesn't matter as much, but I'm just gonna show you anyway, because when you get down to using your oxides, it does matter. So, so then it's, here's a nice thing to do is to just take a dry brush and brush your um, container thing <laughs> clean. Pan, your pan <laughs> clean. Okay, so then I'll go on and I'll do the rest of them. And then maybe I'll make a little second video about phase two, which is going to be mixing and sieving and all that. Okay, that was a long video. Wow. I don't have my glasses on, but I think it's almost 12 minutes. Better go.